Okie dokie, if you're here to see how to hook up a blue flame wall heater, well you're in the right spot. This does natural gas or liquid propane, has a one year warranty, it came from Lowe's, I'll take you in on the barcode, it says indoor or garage use, no chimney required, it's vamp free, dual fuel, heats up to 700 square foot, it has a thermostat control, You can it'll shut off and on, it's really efficient, no electricity required, very simple. You just need a gas hookup, a gas line. Uh, I have videos inside my gas playlist. I'll link this in there with the gas playlist. So go check those out. Here's the barcode. All I've done here is turn the heater face down on the edge of my bed so that I can reach it. I've got everything out of the package, the battery, a couple of little pieces inside a Ziploc, the pamphlet, and this little bar to hang it on the wall. Okay, we'll get to that later. On the back of the heater, there's an LP and an NG for liquid propane and natural gas. I need to remove that screw first. Okay, don't lose that screw. Now, LP, you've got to have the magic fingers to turn it to natural gas. So press it down, give it a good press, and then it'll turn. Once you get to natural gas, let off of it and see if it's locked in place. It is locked in place. If you need to go to liquid propane, press it down, turn it over. It'll pop up and lock in place. So I'm going to be in the natural gas setting, and it is locked in place. I'm going to set this back down. and put the screw back in. Okay, that's locked down. Next up, down here on the bottom, one says natural gas, one says propane. You can see they're capped. That's a cap and that's a cap. That's how it came from the store. I need the natural gas side. So I'm gonna take that sticker off. But if you want to see it, it says natural gas only, switch gas selector on back of the unit to natural gas, which is what we just did here. And then it says inlet pressure, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now we need to remove this cap. So unless you have a big Allen wrench that can fit that, which I don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the channel locks. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. So I cranked it left and now I can pull that cap out. What are we gonna put in there though, you might ask? Well, I've got a handy dandy gadget right here. Okay, this is a 3 8 little stretch of pipe and it's gonna go in right there. I'm going to put this piece on first and then I will pipe dope the other edge. Okay, that's tight enough. Now I'm using this fitting that is a 3 8 inch to a half inch, which is what I need for my, uh, my supply line. That's tight enough. Now we have this piece tightened on going from a 3 8 to a half inch. Over here is where the wall furnace is gonna go. I've put the wall heater in place where I want it, and then I've made a mark on the back of the wall furnace. There's these little notches right here. That's where this bar is gonna set, and it's gonna set on there like that, and the thing just hangs on the wall that easy. 
can see there's four screw holes. Well, you can screw that directly into the wall if you know for sure there's a wall stud behind there, but in most cases, there's not gonna be. So what I'm doing, what I do, is I hang a two by four on the wall. I know there's a wall stud right here because I found it, and there's a wall stud right here because I found it. So I cut a two by four from there, a little bit past right here, which is this two by by four you see right there. All I'm gonna do now is rest this level on that two by four on the wall, and I am gonna screw it in. But a tip for you, you can use a stud finder to find the studs. And in my case, I have a sound reduction wall, which I have a video on, but um, I had to, I couldn't use this. So I used a hammer and a nail, hammer and a nail. And you can see, I found the stud. There was one right here and there was one right there. And I poked this through and I found them and I got lucky. Okay, after you found your studs and you've got your board cut, now I'm putting the board up on the wall and I'm going to throw a level on it. Okay, this is level. Another thing I did is I put this pre-drill hole, um, pre-drilled my holes for my screws and then I put my screws in by hand and now I've leveled it and I'm going to put the screws in. Make sure you're still level. Okay, because since I had such a thick wall, <clears throat> because of my wall being so thick, the sound reduction wall, I used four inch screws, four of them. That holds this on the wall. Now I can hang my bracket. this. Okay, now this bracket is on the wood. The wood is secured with four inch screws into the wall and the heater will now just rest on this. On these little nuggets right here. The heater is on the wall now and you can see down here there's a shut off and then it goes over to here to a sediment trap and then here connects a piece just like this on the other end of the supply line on both ends of the supply line when I bought it it had one of these on both ends it just came like that at the store this side with the cone is the compression side connects right into that 3 8 and you do not put pipe dope this other end it needs pipe dope and Teflon tape right there the Teflon tape and the pipe dope and I use a pair of channel locks to tighten down the compression fitting so here's one of those fittings and it's in the half inch T. Here's the other fitting just like it inside that uh, half inch down to a 3 8 inch reducer. Piped open Teflon tape on that end, not on this end, as well as not on this end, only in this end, see? And this, righty tighty, used a pair of channel locks to tighten that down and the bottom one down as well. And you don't wanna kink that yellow line, so I looped it around and up. And now, uh, since everything's hooked up, you want to make sure your shut off is on now so that the gas can come through into the little machine here. Take that battery that came in the pack and you, it, the battery goes in here. See, right there. And that's what starts the, when you push that, 
You hear that? Now, what you want to do is hold this button down. Now that the battery's in there, hold this down. And this is in the pilot position. Like this. See? So that spark, this is in pilot. It starts that. There's flame. a little rod and that flame, when the gas comes out, that rod, it spark, there's a spark. And when that rod gets hot enough, the pilot light will just stay lit like that. And you can see that's what it's doing right now until the temperature control tells it that it needs to kick on. Like I'll turn it up right here. And you can see, oh, now it's kicked on hot because the temperature control was turned up to five. But if I turn it back down to three, you can see it goes off again. That's because that's the, how the temperature control works. But the pilot light always stays lit. This is super energy efficient. If this video was helpful in any way, go ahead and like it. Subscribe to my channel if you like home improvement videos. And I'm going to make a little video on a carbon monoxide and a smoke detector all in one. So stay